Hey everybody, welcome to The List. I'm Jesse Combs. And I'm Patrick McIntyre. We've had a lot of adventures here on the show and today is no different. We are gonna get a taste of the most popular motorsport there is. It is the crown jewel. It is the seat that every race car driver aspires to sit in. It is one of the fastest forms of racing in the entire world. So come along with us as we check Drive an F1 car off our list. <laughs> I've had a love affair with cars my whole life. I build them in my shop and I race them both on and off road. I've spent years on the auto show circuit talking about cars, but now it's time to get behind the wheel and find the next adventure. Together, we're setting out to tackle all things that every car enthusiast should do. This is The List. So we're here at Thermal Racetrack. It's a private members only club here in California and we are about ready to jump inside of an F1 car with a little bit of instruction first. F1 is one of those things that's completely elusive. If you're not part of Formula One, the chance to be this close to the car, sit in the car, nonetheless drive the car, is an absolute dream come true. Part of the program is getting instruction, and this is one of our instructors right here, Didi Ateas, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you for you being here. Much. So you get a chance to meet all these people that have never had a chance to sit down in these cars before. What is that experience like for you to watch someone for the first time, every oh, time? It's, it's really enjoyable to see the big smile on their face when they got out of the car. They, of course, are a little bit nervous when they go in. They don't know what to expect. They saw the previous run, and uh, they look at the smile of those people, but they always are a little bit anxious. So what should I expect uh, behind the wheel of this physically? What should I expect to feel? Well, you get a lot of uh, Gs uh, in acceleration, mainly, and uh, in the braking, mainly. You know, those cars uh, are close to 700 horsepower. You get carbon brakes, uh, which is, uh, at the end of each straightaway, you can brake very late. And actually, those brake only work if you brake late. If you brake too early, the brake will not pick up any heat, and you're not going to have any brake. The vehicles themselves, it sounds like they, they work at their best when they are pushed to their fullest. Or they build that way. Yeah. They build, they build to, to run those cars at the maximum horsepower, braking, downforce. And uh, when you experience driving those cars, of course, you're not going to be at the limit like a Formula One Grand Prix. Uh, you cannot be a Formula One Grand Prix driver, you know, in five laps around thermal, you know, to be honest with you. But, you know, you're going to get the, the feeling of what a Grand Prix driver, you know, feel with their own race. The day started off with a briefing from Didier. We hopped into the van to learn the course as a group, and then we jumped into the Lotus of S to get accustomed to paddle shifting as we practiced the proper race line. This was all part of the curriculum laid out by the Pirelli GP Experience. They hold events at circuits all over North America, providing the race cars and expertise that enables people like you and I to experience the thrill of driving an F1 car. With a price tag of seven dollars to $10,000, it's not a cheap thrill by any stretch, but for the diehard enthusiast, it's a surefire way to live a day at the wheel as an F1 pilot. The Thermal Club track is made up of three main courses, with 4.8 miles of track and the flexibility to run in 19 unique configurations. We'll be driving the South Palm Circuit, which has 10 turns and a 2,500 foot straightaway. Yeah, I want to keep within a reasonable distance, but we want to work on what we need to. That's fine. Is this far enough behind for you? Yeah, no, we can, yeah, this is a good distance. Okay. I mean, let's get in the habit of, of using the paddles, because you're going to have to use that in the Formula One car. Okay, good to know. Okay, I'm looking to the corner. Okay. I'll be patient on the throttle here. So real easy? Yeah. Get your eyes up to the next one. Okay, wait for it to point. Now we can get on the gas and go. Wait for it to point. Yep. Yeah, so slow, like over slow the car for these tight hairpins. Like over slow it, let the car turn in, and then get on the throttle. Okay. Okay, hard on the brake. Brakes. Look in. Now patience. Patience okay. on the throttle. I'm, I'm the in throttle. too early on this one, but patience, it's okay. Patience. Okay, now you can start to go. And just let it open up. Good. <laughs> I guess I know where the rev limiter is. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty awesome. I mean, I'm definitely learning a lot about the track, when to brake, when to turn in, when not to throttle just yet, and just to be patient. I mean, there's, there's something about racing when you get out on the course that you just want to go as fast as you can everywhere you possibly can. I, feel, I, I don't know if I'm getting better. I'm talking myself through everything they're telling me what to do and I can't tell if I'm actually doing better or not. I'm still doing a little bit of oversteering, but in the, the grand scheme of things, I still think it's all going to change once we get into the F1 car. As part of our F1 experience, we get to actually drive with 
pro drivers and one of them is Simona D. Silvestron and I have to say that I highly respect because she has a lot of accolades in the open wheel world. You want to tell us a little bit about what got you from first getting in, I'm assuming it would be a kart, all the way up to where you are now? Yeah, so I started racing pretty much when I was five years old. My career kind of took me 10 years of go-karting and then I ended up going into uh, Formula cars, which is kind of a normal step when you're like 15. Uh, I came to the US in uh, 2006 actually to do Formula BMW over here and then did four years of Indy cars. And this year I was lucky to be testing for Sauber Formula One team. I mean, literally how long do you think it would take to get sitting in a pro seat? Well, you know, it takes quite a bit, uh, especially when going into open wheel, you only can do that around when you're 16 years old. Uh, and then there's a lot of different categories you have to go through. And racing, unfortunately, is also a sport that costs a lot of money. So, you know, you can be really talented, but you also need people behind you who support your career. But, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. You know, you get to drive cars and it's uh, just really special. You know, there's a lot of drivers out there that uh, don't get the chance to get to a level like IndyCars or F1 and uh, I'm really lucky to be doing this. After a full day of instruction and seat time, it was finally time to suit up for the ride of our lives and Jesse is up first. We each have slightly different driving styles, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out with the power and precision of an F1 car. I spun out, that means I'm done. Damn it. I don't like that part. I know that when we spin out, we're done. Coming out of one of the turns, I got a little too happy on the throttle. But the crazy thing is, is like it's not like it's a sensitive throttle. It's like when you touch the throttle, there's just so much power to the car that it just takes off. It's just a little bit goes a long way. And I did a little too much than just a little bit. And now it was my turn. Watching Jesse spin out really up the stakes for me. I was trying not to let it psych me out. You touch nothing, no gas, no clutch. Nothing, go ahead. When the engine running, you do two time with the throttle. Boom, boom. Okay. Push the clutch. I, I'm on the front, I do that. That's clutch. Yeah, and there is second gear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You release the clutch very slowly. When you feel the car move, move. A few last minute pointers were much needed reassurance in this moment. That was amazing. That was unbelievable. 
Oh my God. <laughs> Well, it's been a long day, but we can officially check drive an F1 car off the list. And I can officially check spin out an F1 car off my list. Well, you have to respect the beast. But for now, I think we have one more experience, mm -hmm. and that is to know what an F1 car is really like with a pro driver behind the wheel. Oh, a little ride along. Yes, let's do it. All right, thanks All right. for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.